My name is Mrs. Taylor. Check this out. This is a collection of coins that I found from all around my house. I like to collect it, and when my piggy bank gets full, I count all the coins to see how much money I have, and then I'm able to go buy something really cool. Before I go on vacation, I like to count my coins and turn them into cash. That way, when I go on my trip, I can buy some really cool souvenirs. Here are two Mickey Mouse friends that I bought when I went to Disney World. This is Mickey Mouse dressed up like a cowboy and Mickey Mouse dressed up like a race car driver. Aren't they so cute? Isn't it amazing what you can buy when you simply have a little patience and look around your house for some spare change? You can do it too and buy something cool. Today I'm really hungry, so we're going to look for some spare change and use it to help me get some breakfast. Then we're going to drive to Chick-fil-A and grab ourselves a chicken biscuit. What's your favorite breakfast? Mmm, that sounds delicious. But before we start hunting for change, let's discuss some different math strategies that can help us count coins up to $5. The first thing we need to do when we're learning how to count change is to be able to identify the names of each coin. So here is a reminder of what each coin looks like and how much it's worth. The first picture has the heads and tails of a quarter. That's worth 25 cents a piece. The second one are the heads and tails of a dime, which is worth 10 cents. On the bottom is a nickel, which is worth five cents. And finally, the brown one is a penny, which is worth one cent. When I'm learning how to count change, I don't wanna just count it up in my head. I wanna show my work on a piece of paper somehow. So here's strategy number one, the counting on strategy. I start with a quarter, so I put 25 cents under that coin. Then I'm gonna add 25 plus 10, which is the next money amount on my coin. That equals 35. 25 plus 10 equals 35. Then I'm going to add another 5 cents to it because it's a nickel. That's 40. And then finally, I have two pennies, so I count on by one. 41 and 42. Our final total is 42 cents. If our first math strategy didn't help you count the coins, then try strategy number two, the hairy coin strategy. I call it hairy coins because a circle can represent your face, and on top of your head, you have hair. So we call it hairy coins. Each line or hair is worth five, so how many lines do we see on the quarter? That's right, there are five lines. Let's count them by five together. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. That's how much a quarter is. Let's move on to the next coin. It's the dime, which is in the middle of the picture. If a dime is worth 10 cents, how many lines are on a dime? That's right, there's two lines on a dime. Let's count them together. Five, 10. That's how much a dime is worth. Next, we have a nickel. Since a nickel is worth five cents, we only have to draw one line. A nickel is worth five cents. You may have noticed that the penny has an X on it. That's because it doesn't have any lines on it. We count them by ones. Unless we have five pennies together, we don't need to put pen lines on the penny. Here's what our first example looks like using the hairy coin strategy. First, put the hairs on each coin. Then count by five. Five, 10, 15, 20, 25. 30, 35, 40. We stop at 40 and then we start counting by ones because the pennies don't have hairs on them. 41, 42. Your final amount is 42 cents. Most of you remember how to write 42 cents by writing the number 42 followed by a C with a line through it. The second way that we can write 42 cents is by changing the C with a line through it to a decimal. You put it in front of the number 42. Don't use both the cent sign and the decimal point when you're trying to write 42 cents. Only pick one. There's also a way to write 42 cents using the dollar sign. Write the dollar sign, which is an S with a line through it. Then write down how many dollars there are. This example doesn't have any dollars, so we're going to write a zero. The decimal point comes next. Everything after the decimal point shows the numbers of cents. We have zero dollars and 42 cents. Since we use the decimal point, we don't have to use the cent sign, which is the C with the line through it. We can only use one of them. Our third strategy for counting money is called the added up strategy. Oh no, I don't remember how much three quarters equals. So what am I going to do? Well, I remember that two quarters equals 50 cents. So all I have to do is add 50 cents plus 25 cents and I get 75 cents. Then I remember, oh, that's right, my teacher told me that three quarters equals 75 cents, and then I'm able to count the rest faster. Let's finish out this problem by adding it up. 
Our first group of coins is in red. It's 75 cents, so I wrote that number on the top. My second group of coins is 10, 15, 16. So I wrote that number underneath 75 cents. Then I'm going to add them up. 5 plus 6 is 11. Carry my 1. 1 plus 7 plus 1 equals 9. So my total is 91 cents. When you have lots of coins to count, see if you can make a dollar. Circle it so you don't have to count these again. Then see how much you have outside of the circle. I count the largest coins first, so I start with the dimes. 10, 20, 25, 26. The final total is $1.26. Now that I know how to count change, let's search around the house for some more money. I wonder how many coins we're going to find today. I love it when the weather gets cooler and I have to go find a sweatshirt or jacket to put on. I always find coins in the pockets. Let's see if I find any today. I hear something. I found four quarters. How much are four quarters? Let's see how much you've learned today. How much money do you see? Pause the video, figure out how much money it is by using one of the math strategies I showed you, and then write down the answer. Unpause the video when you're ready to check your work. If you said that four quarters equals a dollar, then you are correct. Sometimes you can find loose change in the sofa. Let's see if we can find some today. Yes! Number two, how much money did I find in the sofa? Pause the video, figure it out, and unpause it when you're ready to check your answer. If you said that I found 68 cents in the sofa, then you are correct. You can also write 68 cents using the cent sign. To get rid of the decimal point, write 68 and put the C with a line through it. Either way, you got it correct. When my husband rides in the car with me, he'll sit in the passenger seat. A lot of times he'll carry a lot of spare change in his pockets because he has some leftover from the change that he gets from lunch. Well, when he comes to sit in the passenger seat, sometimes his spare change falls out of his pocket into my seat cushions. So let's see if we can find some more money in my seat cushions to add to my collection. This is the passenger seat. Let's see if we can find some coins. Oh, there's some. There's a quarter. I found some. There's a quarter. Got some more. Here's some of the money that I found in the seat cushion. Let's count it and see how much we have. How much money did I find in my car? Pause the video and figure it out. If you said that there was $1.72 in the car, then you were correct. Did you notice that there were four quarters? Did you circle them just like I did so you had less coins to count? When you count out the leftover chains outside of the circle, you counted 72 cents. 25, 35, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 71, 72 for a total of $1.72. Of course, the number one place in my house to find spare change is right here in my purse. If I dig in there, usually I find tons of change. And today does not disappoint. How much money did I find in my purse? Pause the video and figure it out. If you said that the answer was $2.59, then you are correct. I found four quarters, so I circled them to make a dollar. I found three quarters to make 75 cents, and I was really hoping that I could find 25 cents in the leftover change, and I was able to do that. 10 plus 10 plus 5 equals 25, so I circled that up and got another dollar. Then I counted the rest of the change outside of the circles and got 59 cents for a total of $2.59. Wow, this counting change business is really starting to make sense to me. How about you? So, what do you think? Do I have enough money to go to Chick-fil-A? Do I have at least $5 altogether? Let's add it up to see how much money we have. The arrow shows you which column to add up first. So I'm going to add up 8 plus 2, that equals 10, plus 9 equals 19. I'm going to carry my 1 put it in the other column and put the 9 down below. You see them highlighted in the picture. Find the red area to see the column that you add up together next. 1 plus 6 equals 7. 7 plus 7 is 14. 14 plus 5 equals 19. I'm going to carry my 1 again and put the 9 down below. 
Look at the red arrow again, and we're going to add up the last column. 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 equals 5 for a total of $5.99. That should be enough to buy me a nice chicken biscuit meal from Chick-fil-A. Thanks so much for joining me today as we search for spare coins around my house. And thank you also for helping me count all those coins so that we could get up to $5 and have my special breakfast. If you liked today's video, click the like button. And if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, click the subscribe button so you don't miss out on a single adventure. Until next time, goodbye.